All right, new new video, exciting news. Uh, so the goat farm I've been working on, I finally got a chance to uh, get some goat milk. So I have right here goat milk, and I'm going to be making my own Chev cheese in today's video. But I did get a pretty awesome package. Put that back in the fridge. Seeds from uh, Fedco. They're located in Clinton, Maine. On the farm that I'm working at, there's a, a blank little field off to the side, or a vacant little field, not blank. And it um, hasn't been used in a really long time, so I got uh, a whole bunch of seeds, and I'm clearing myself probably 900 square feet of uh, space to do all my plants. Let's see what I got here. I got tried to get everything organic. I didn't get organic zucchini because I messed up when I was ordering. I got perfection fennel. I got Bell Star paste tomatoes. I got some um, heirloom tomatoes. I got pineapple heirlooms, pink Berkeley tie dyes, crookneck squash. Lots of beets. Uh, the lady that I work for, she really likes beets, so I thought that would be cool. I don't mind a beet every now and then. Uh, black OP zucchini. That's pretty cool. And a lot of bush beans. Probably way too many. But that's just what I'm starting off with. Uh, before I make my cheese today, I'm actually going to go uh, mix a little bleach solution, clear out, uh, clean out all of my uh, seed starting kits, and... Uh, get some of these tomato seeds started because it's a really nice warm day outside. So finally, we finally got a 70 degree uh, day here in uh, New England. And by that I mean New Hampshire, Maine area. So that'll be really cool. So I'm going to start up a lot of these seeds. But I have my cheese making kit. I got this uh, DIY cheese kit. Um, it was actually a gift for Christmas I think a while back. And I don't even think it was really for me. But uh, we have it in the house. It makes eight batches, so I'll probably have a few goes at it. It says that it makes Chev cheese, but I know Chev cheese is made with rennet, uh, be it whatever kind of rennet you want to start it with. So it's kind of like a uh, like a mozzarella kit, but it's going to be a real soft cheese like a Chev. So I'm going to show you how to do that here in a little while, but first I'm going to go start my seeds. And I'll show you all my seed trays when I'm finished. All right, stick around. Just uh, probably sowing eh, right around like maybe 220 seeds. So I got all my heirloom tomatoes, my paste tomatoes, and I started out a little fennel uh, right here in this container. Uh, you can see it's still snow on the ground, but you got to get started sometime because you can't wait all spring. So we're going to go do some cheese right after I get changed up and uh, change up my shirt and get cleaned up and we're going to... We're going to try and make some cheese. It should be pretty fun. It's a nice warm day out here. It feels great. Want to come Yeah. Don't touch my plants, Jill. All right. Hands clean. Shirt is changed into a semi-clean shirt. I've gathered everything uh, that I need here to make my cheese. This is what uh, pretentious... Uh, real restaurant folk or French people call uh, your mise en place. I don't know what it means but I can tell you uh, that the cheese kit comes with your directions nifty little box cheese is salt citric acid uh, these little cheese mold cups a thermometer and that's it everything else you need to provide is a uh, measuring spoon uh, wet measuring cup or liquid measuring cup you need some milk this is uh, goat milk from uh, one of the goats that I muck oh I forgot that the kit also includes a cheesecloth but it does not include a colander or a bowl <laughs> so you got a uh, box cheese salt citric acid mold cheesecloth directions that's everything that it comes with there so uh, first thing we need to do is mix one teaspoon of citric acid into one quarter cup of drinking water and stir it until it's dissolved. When you're mixing your citric acid, you want to make sure that you put it in something that is either enamel, stainless steel, or glass. And that's because the citric acid can react with an aluminum pot 
or maybe like a, a steel pot that doesn't have like a stick proof uh, coating on it. So I'm just going to put it in a normal glass cup. So I got my glass cup here, so my liquid measuring cup here with a quarter cup of water. This doesn't measure a quarter cup of water. I'm actually just going to mix my uh, citric acid into my liquid measuring cup. <clears throat> In the directions, it shows a pot, mixing it into a pot, but there is no direction for you to actually warm the water. So keep that in mind when you're trying to, uh, you know, jerry-rig this on your own. You just need to mix the citric acid into a quarter cup of water. Now, I eyeballed this in my liquid measuring cup, but from years of cooking rice, noodles, and grits, I'm pretty good at eyeballing it. So now that we've done that, we need to heat the milk to 190 on a medium setting. Check and stir often to prevent a skin on the surface of the milk and adjust heat if needed. After that, we'll turn the heat to low and we will thoroughly stir in our citric acid water mix with my wooden spoon here so it will not react. comes with a pretty uh, nifty thermometer. Get a good look at that. That's raw milk right there. Boy, she thick. All right. So I'm going to heat this up and get right back. So we're almost uh, 190 Fahrenheit. What I like to do with this slotted spoon here is I stick this little tip in between one of the slots so it's not touching the bottom of the pot so you're not getting like the real heat off the bottom. Feeling the bottom for skin, looking at the top. Doing okay so far. There we are. We're at 190. So once we get the milk temperature to 190, we're going to pour in our citric acid drinking water mix and then stir it thoroughly. Stir it nice and slow. You're also going to turn it on to low when you do this too. I've already turned it on to low. About as low as she'll go without going out. The directions say you should see some subtle curdling if you do not heat for another minute. Do not allow the temperature to go over 195 degrees Fahrenheit because the milk may suddenly boil over. Step number four is to remove the pot from the heat, cover, and do not disturb for 10 minutes. I'm just going to finish uh, thoroughly stirring in my citric acid here. I'm already seeing curdling. 
pretty amazing, actually. Going to put the cover on, wash a few of my dishes, let this sit for 10 minutes. Going to put a timer on my iPhone, remove it from the heat, and I'll be right back. After. All right, after you've let your uh, cheese sit in the pot for 10 minutes, get its curds. Kind of smells like turkey. It's kind of weird. <laughs> You can either gently spoon your curds, or, or well, the fifth step would be to lay your uh, cheesecloth inside of your colander. And if you want to collect your whey to use it for something else, which I'm actually going to try and use my whey to make some banana bread, so it's like super protein banana bread, because I love banana bread. Um, that would be the fifth step. The sixth step is to actually strain the curds. You can either pour it in. If I had a second set of hands here, I'd have someone hold this for me and I'd just pour it in. Because I like to go fast, I got other stuff to do. But I'm just going to spoon it in slowly. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's already started to curd. So we'll do this. So, after you've already uh, poured all of the cheese in, get something that kind of looks like this. This is all of our whey. <laughs> you can drink that and get pumped, right? <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna set this aside. Well, maybe I'll make a mess. And this is our cheese. So it comes with cheese salt, and uh, cheese salt in this kit uh, supposedly is AKA kosher salt. So I'm just going to actually, I'm gonna take a little nibble see what it tastes like without the salt because I, I don't really care for salt too much. Mm. It, it definitely has like the, that sticky uh, cheesy taste to it. I'm going to add in a little salt. I'm just going to do a pinch. It says a, a teaspoon. I'm having a wonderful time doing this. This is a way thicker cheese than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit softer, um, like most of the chefs that I have, or that I get from the farm. This is like a really crumbly, uh, kind of like farmer's cheese that you would put on a salad, if you're into that sort of thing. So I'll take another spoon, a little spoony. My pinch does go pretty far. It goes probably about as far as maybe a, a teaspoon would, but I'm going to put a little bit more in because I didn't mix it up very well. And I think this will probably be... So I would say the directions are probably on point. Uh, I'm doing this with very raw milk, but um, I read the reviews on this uh, little box and some people liked it and some people didn't like it. I can tell you what, right now I'm actually thoroughly enjoying it. So, to be honest with you, with this box set, they give you cheesecloth, they give you a thermometer, and they give you citric acid. Everything else you can buy yourself. And, to be straight up, you could buy any of that stuff. They're just giving you the recipe for it. So if you want to go find the recipe, or if you want to try out the kit, because you think it's cute, or you want to buy it for one of your friends, I think it's a great idea. So... I don't know, I'm going to put this in my little bucket and uh, hopefully get some Triscuits tonight, maybe uh, when I go grab dinner or something like that. One more little taste. Just a taste. <laughs> and I'm actually going to hold on to this whey. I might, I might freeze it in a can and use it for my banana bread. Maybe I'll do a, a video on that. That tastes great. That's super awesome. So if you want to do it, I'll include the uh, link to where you can buy this kit. I'll include the link in the bio. 
I don't know, shop local, eat organic, cook stuff yourself, live your life. That's all I can really tell you. Um, big updates coming soon. I got a rad private land turkey spot to go hunting. Or rad private land uh, spot to go turkey hunting. And anything else, uh, the guy said, supposedly. So that'll be pretty rad. Got 900 square feet that I'm getting ready to plow, cut, trim, tear up. Whole bunch of heirloom tomatoes we're going to start growing. It's going to be awesome. Uh, stick around for the ride. Like, subscribe. Ugh.